Well, before you go to a movie or a musical, there's a chance you know what it's about. But imagine being able to help write the story. It's the next big thing from the Omaha Symphony. You write it, you yes. see it, you do the whole thing. Back on the blend, Principal Pops Conductor Ernest Richardson. Good to hey, see you. Ernest. Ernest. Great to see you this guys. This is a fun this concept. I like this. Sounds so cool. Yeah, well, what it's great. Of, what type of music are we going to hear? Well, it's all kinds of symphonic music and cinema music. And so you talk about the story. Basically, the, the kids have a chance to choose between one of two ideas and we put the story together over a sequence of the ideas that they choose so here's these characters is it going to be happy or sad is it going to be this or that and the music kind of captures it mm -hmm. so whichever direction that they choose the orchestra will play music that goes along with it so then we put together the storyline that they've directed and the, and the orchestra plays all the music that goes yeah. with it and then we go back and say well what if we had chosen differently so then we'll go back and play it the opposite direction, uh -huh. you know, so if it's you're one, two, one, two, two, way. one, two, one, I mean, yeah. I mean, you guys know what you're doing. We do know what we're doing, <laughs> but that's the hard part, I'm actually, because sure we're used to doing music like this, yeah. and now uh -huh. we have to go back and do it in different orders. Is there a lot, a lot of rummaging around that's on funny. those music stands? Well, we have a great library, so they are able to put together so that in any given moment, you either on this page, uh -huh. or part, this part of the page, or this part. Do you of the still page. use pages, or do you use tablets now? No, it's still paper. It's still paper. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, I like that. To me, that that's one area that hasn't gone totally high tech. Uh, some of the stories, though, "Once Upon a Time" is the name of this. But some of the stories you were talking about the char characters being happy and sad. What is the the nature of the story? Well, that's the point. That, that is the point. Yeah, there Even is, that is determined. That's determined by, by, the, by audience. the kids. And so there's kind of different options that they can take. It sort of seems like there's potential for chaos here, Ernest. Like you're asking a, a, like a huge room full of kiddos to, to weigh in on the fly. Well, like, organized chaos is pretty fun. <laughs> right. And they also enjoy, they kind of enjoy, like if the story takes a crazy turn, uh -huh. they sort of enjoy that yeah. and they sort of enjoy being in on the joke. So uh -huh. it's pretty fun. I really, you know, I like, I like the, you can't, you don't anticipate what's coming. You don't know what's coming down uh, the pike, but um, what, what kind of story uh, can you tell through music as you're going through this whole process and you're figuring out what, which way the audience is leaning? Right. Well, some of the music that we're going to play that precedes the story creation part um, is a lot like the soundtrack of a movie. So if you listen to the music of a movie, you can mm. kind of tell what's going on. Mm -hmm. So if the music's big mm -hmm. and, and, and luxurious, something like that is going on. Well, have you ever watched a movie without a soundtrack? I mean, it, it, it takes the whole element out of the movie. Actually, you can take something that's incredibly dramatic and turn the soundtrack off or turn just the yeah. music off and it's almost comical. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yeah. so yes, the, it's it really powerful. Tone, yeah. yeah. Um, this this event is unique. I've never heard of you guys doing anything like it before. And you do tons for families throughout the year, but this right. is still special. Right. One of the things that is consistent, though, is what's happening before the concert. Right. And, and this is yet another, I mean, he's a dad. Um, Liam is here today. Yes, uh, he hanging is. out with us. Um, and so I think that this is a really great opportunity for parents to introduce music to their kids and get their hands on instruments mm -hmm. that they might not have a chance to touch otherwise. What's going right. on before the show? There's a lot, lot of pre-concert activities, mm -hmm. as you mentioned, and opportunities for kids to try instruments out. We really think of it as an opportunity for families to, to kind of extend the experience. What's tough today, you know, is to schedule in like quality time. You almost have to really deliberately schedule if you're going to have one of those experiences mm -hmm. that, that we can recall as a family. And so if they come early to the performance, they have the pre-concert activities. Mm -hmm. There's often things that happen after the concert. And then we always extend it even further. So go out for ice cream or something like uh -huh. that. So yeah. it becomes this kind of total family engagement surrounded by the sound of the orchestra. What, what do you like about this, these family shows? I mean, you do the, the Omaha Symphony does a lot of stuff throughout the course mm -hmm. of the year. Not all of it is for kids. Um, you know, some families are maybe getting their kids involved with the orchestra uh, at, a, at, a, at a deeper level. But these family uh, shows are, are a way to get kids to enjoy uh, violins mm -hmm. and cellos and right. trumpets <laughs> and all that stuff that, you know, maybe they don't hear on the radio. Well, see, it's very interesting that you say it because if you think of orchestral music as a kind of language, there's a point in a, in a young person's life when they can just absorb languages so quickly. Like if we wanted to learn Italian, sure. it's yes. very romantic, you know, we speak to the people we love in Italian, it'd be fantastic, yeah. right? But it's harder for people our age, you know, to 25 plus, to learn, it, yeah. to, to learn <laughs> the new language. Plus. But when the kids are listening to this music at such a young age, they develop a sense of the language and what might sound foreign to them 
a little bit older in their lives, right now is a great time for them to hear it. Mm -hmm. And so it gets them excited about it. And as you said, they begin to point. feel that. Yeah. We were just talking with our neighbors last night about their little ones in kindergarten learning to speak Spanish. And, and then, mm -hmm. you know, for, the, for their parents, like, oh, it was a lot harder for me to learn identical to the point that you're making right yeah. now. But access is so important and every time you're here, I love to drive home ticket prices because mm -hmm. this is the other point of it. You go and you get an experience like what we've described here today, you would expect to pay three times mm -hmm. as much well, as there, what you see on the right. screen. There's not too many shows at the Holland Center that are $12. No, right. and especially when you're talking these pre-concert activities and something that's so memorable as being able to not just watch the show but be part of writing it. But this is what you get with the Family Series and the Omaha Symphony. Once upon a time, it's up on Sunday at 2 o'clock. What time should folks get there for the pre-concert activities, Ernest? If they, they could come even an hour early, but 45 minutes to half an mm -hmm. hour is, is, a, is a good time. Okay. All right, OmahaSymphony.com or get your tickets today. It's a great family show. Have fun and on just, Sunday. Have a great St. Patty's Day, too. Thank you. Will you guys be rehearsing today? So, uh, some will, yes. Some will. Yes. <laughs> the rest will be watching Creighton. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hanging out and having that's a great. Thanks, Chris. Great to see you. Great to see you, too. It is St. Patrick's Day, and we've got our green on.